In this video, we'll look at using variables to create a light and a dark mode color palette. We'll then take those variables, put them in some simple components, and I'll show you how to make them dynamically switch from dark to light mode. Let's get started. Dark mode is common now. You've probably seen it across all the websites you use, the apps, the SaaS platforms, everything. There are many benefits to using a dark mode. A few of these include reducing eye strain, reducing distraction, improving focus, reducing blue light exposure, which apparently helps you sleep better. And apparently I've heard that it can save battery life because using dark mode uses less energy. The traditional way in Figma of creating a dark mode would involve multiple layouts and components. This would get super busy and super confusing when designing large projects. If you think about it, your page is made up of multiple components. And if you need one component for light and one component for dark for each one of those bits of your page, it's gonna take a long time. Local variables allow you to take a much simpler approach. All you have to do is set up your color variables, choose a light mode and a dark mode, and then all those variables will be available to you across your designs going forward. First, you're gonna need some colors. So let's jump straight into Figma. All right, so here we go. I set up a colors section um, and we're gonna need some light colors. So here's some I've set up earlier. We've got a white background and then three core colors in there. So we've got a blue, green, and red. We're also gonna need some dark colors, which um, I've also prepared earlier, which are here. So you've got the background and then blue, green, and red again. Uh, for the eagle-eyed of you out there, you'll notice that the blue, green, and red in the dark mode are ever so slightly different. Uh, these have been desaturated to become more, I guess, pastely. Uh, this helps reduce eye strain when you're looking at a dark mode for a long time. You'll also notice here that the black background isn't actually pure black. So black is zero, 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 zero. Is that too many zeros? But this is just off, so it's just ever so slightly gray. Uh, the reason I've done that is that black can cause eye strain as well. So always try and just tone down the black, blackness, if possible. Okay, so we've got our two color variants. We've got light and dark mode. Now we need to set up some variables. So if you deselect everything and then click the local variables section up here, uh, you'll be presented with a new bit of functionality which allows you to create variables. And in these variables, we can create colors. So let's rename this collection so we know what we're talking about. And call this colors and then create a variable. So we have four options here. We're just gonna play with the color variable. I'll do um, some tutorials on the other variables at some point, but we'll stick with this one for now. So I click that and you can see that you get uh, a name and a value. So for this, we wanna set up all the colors that we've got in our light mode first. So I'm gonna call this one background. And what you can do here is either type in the hex value if you know it, or just use your dropper tool. So what I'll do is get the dropper, click there. And it's just an ever so slightly off white. Now I need to do three more, one for blue, one for green, and one for red. So I'll quickly do those now. So that's, that's the light mode setup. We now need an extra mode, don't we? So we're missing the dark mode. So if I expand this ever so slightly, you'll see that there's a plus button up here next to the value. So if I click that, it turns the original one into a mode called mode one and then mode two. This is where we can do some pretty cool things. So if we rename mode one light and we'll rename mode two dark, and then all we need to do is, let's move that down a bit, select the dark colors. So we'll choose the background there the slightly different blue, the slightly different green, and the slightly different red. So now we have our colors set up. So we've got variables for light mode and variables for dark mode. We'll just move these out of the way for now. In fact, we can just close this down. So I'll do that now. Okay, so what I've done here is create another section. And what I'm gonna do is create a frame. So if I hit the F key, I draw a little frame in there and we'll call this one light mode again. Okay, so what I'll do is select um, the light mode stuff and I'll just paste that into here. So we'll put that in the middle. 
Now, with all that pasted in, we want to select the outside frame. Sorry, we want to select the inside and start assigning the colors to them. So that one was background. That one was blue. That one was green. And then finally the red one. Cool. So we've got this frame within another frame called light. And if we select this frame out here now, you'll notice this cool little layer icon thing. And it says change variable mode. So if you click that, and in the colors, you can choose light. Okay, so now we're gonna duplicate this one. And call it dark. And all we have to do now is from this drop down, select dark. And it automatically switches between light and dark. So there's one last cool thing we can do. So if we grab this um, frame with the toggle on and duplicate that, just bring it down here. Now. I can delete the dark one and just slide this over a bit. So I've got everything um, here that's uh, for my light mode. The frame here is set for light. The frame here is set for dark. If I grab the, the inside component and drag everything across, it automatically switches to dark. And that's because the outside frame is looking everything inside it to see what color variables are attached and whether it's set to light or dark mode. So you can easily create one layout and do the variance for dark mode uh, by the flick of a switch. This is one of many use cases you could try for using variables in your designs. Some other ideas include things like a dynamic pricing list, an interactive calculator. You could test multiple languages in one prototype. You could define responsive layouts using margins, padding, and positioning. You could even try your hand at creating a fully interactive shopping cart. I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to check any others out, just click up above. Thanks again, and I'll see you later.